Hi, my name is Sin Chai Tao. It is my pleasure to give to present this work on behalf of my laboratory, Cyborg, at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. So what is Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease is a form of dementia that manifests itself in changes in the gray matter and white matter in the brain. A distinctive feature of Alzheimer's disease is the development of beta amyloid or A-beta plaques. We will generally focus on the A-beta plaques in this talk, although another distinctive feature is the tau tangles, which we will not talk about today. The formation of these plaques are thought to be moderated by the expression of the genetic factor APOE. The phenotype of the gene that is most disposed, um, approximately 30% more for the homozygote, is the APOE4 genotype. Although the damage of A-beta is diffused, we have observed a distinct pattern of disease progression, as shown here. Currently, the earliest technique for detecting disease progression is through A-beta, as shown in the red curve. It is done through measurements of the CSF or, or through PET studies with the agent PIB. Unfortunately, both these techniques are pretty invasive, especially when conducted in normal controls. Volumetric MRI measurements such in the brain, uh, of brain structures, such as hippocampus, is shown in purple. All we hope is to develop a technique um, and that allows us for earlier detection. We believe we can develop, uh, we can use diffusion tensor imaging uh, and expand on that technique to allow us to have a non-invasive earlier detection of Alzheimer's disease, which also lends itself well as a screening and treatment tool, a treatment monitoring tool. Just a quick look at the ground truth. Here are two fixed brains. The left one is a healthy one. The right one is of al advanced Alzheimer's. Um, notice that the uh, damage when the Alzheimer's brain is diffuse. It's non-focal. And um, you can see the distinctive feature of the enlarged ventricles. Here are some corresponding images from T1-weighted uh, MRI. Uh, notice you can also see the non-focal and diffuse white and gray matter damage. You can also see the um, enlarged ventricles in this case. So just to summarize what I've uh, said so far, uh, our goal is to map A-beta related disruptions in the brain, specifically in the white matter through diffusion tensor imaging. And much of my work is how to extend current DCAT methodology to achieve this. So there are the plaques here. And what happens when we uh, try to image those tracks and the white matter tracks that have uh, these um, beta amyloid plaques in them. So to understand what I'm trying to do, I'm going to talk a little bit about diffusion MRI. So why use diffusion temperature imaging and diffusion MRI? Diffusion, diffusion tensor imaging is a technique that's based on diffusion of water molecules in the brain. And in the presence of axons, the diffusion of the water molecule is restricted, and its profile is not completely spherical. Diffusion tensor imaging is a technique to model the diffusion, this non sphericalness of the diffusion profile. Um, the more non spherical it is, we uh, describe that as a more anisotropic diffusion profile. And one that is uh, more spherical would describe as an isotropic diffusion profile. And we can summarize this tensor, which is this football or spherical shape, um, by decomposing it into three eigenvalues and three eigenvectors. The eigenvalues are lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. And the eigenvectors are epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and epsilon 3. From these eigenvalues, we can calculate measurements of an isotropy, such as FA, which is, describes how sharp the football shape is. Notice that FA is normalized by the absolute size of the diffusion 
profile of the football. And so therefore it is a normalized metric. Um, another simpler metric is, for example, MD, just to show that there are other metrics out of the diffusion profile. We're really going to focus on the, uh, um, the FA metric. Another thing we can do that I'm not going to talk too much about today is we can look at the epsilon ones, so basically the long direction of the diffusion profiles, and do a thing called tractography where we basically trace a path through the vector field indicated by the primary eigenvector direction. So great, now we have some basis to detect these uh, plaques and the effects of these plaques in the white matter of the brain. So how do we do that? So we start with original set of diffusion weighted images. And as you've seen before, neurological damage in AD is non-focal and unlike tumors and strokes. So if you look at an image, you can see the enlarged ventricles, but other than that, it's hard to see any other types of damage. So we really need a quantitative method. Fortunately, DTI is one of these quantitative me methods, and it's because the FA is normalized and um, varies between 0 and 1. But um, I'll talk a little bit more about how this is done and how why I think this is a, one way to look at a non-focal uh, diffuse damage in the brain. So again, we start off with a diffusion image. Here is one image, a slice of a volume of the brain. And each of these volumes really measure only one diffusion gradient direction. So they're weighted by that diffusion gradient direction. So in order to get the whole profile in just not one direction, we'll have to acquire a lot of images. So in this case, we do 25. And these are equally spaced, um, uh, relatively equally dispersed in space. Um, we've They've calculated an optimal way of, of um, which direction to measure in the scanner. And you have to remember, so there's 25 ranging directions, so the 25 imaging volumes for each of these directions. Another way to look at it is that you have a slice, so you're measuring at every voxel um, of the brain. So you're really having diffusion profile at each of the voxels of the brain. So this is an extremely large data set. So 25 dimensions uh, in the gradient uh, direction dimension in the angular or the angular direction. And of course, the, depending on your the size of the image, you have uh, the, the, the volume size. So basically, this is a very large data set and very difficult to analyze since it's large and noisy. So we really wanted to do some dimension reduction here. One way to do dimension reduction is to summarize a diffusion profile uh, using a model. In this case, we can use a tensor model. And it reduces the size of the, the high dimensionality of the data, but it also reduces noise since we're, we're fitting this, um, the data to this model. And so now we have not only original diffusion weighted images, which is at 25 dimensions, uh, gradient dimensions. Now we've tensor fitted it to nine dimensions um, into this tensor shape. So next we have this tensor shape. Um, but unfortunately, this uh, th nine dimensions as described by this three by three matrix is still um, rotationally variant, meaning depending on the football direction, the uh, values on this um, on this uh, uh, this three by three matrix will change. We really want something that describes the shape no matter what direction the uh, football is painting uh, pointing towards. So one way to do this is to do matrix comp decomposition on this 3 by 3 matrix. And uh, once we do that, you get uh, a set of lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. So these are the eigenvalues that correspond to th the three eigenvector directions. And uh, the primary one, lambda 1, will always be the largest direction, which is the pointiest side of the football. And just to show you here, uh, it really cons corresponds to the main direction of where the axons are. And uh, this model uh, is, is it trying to describe the diffusion profile when there are axons um, in this direction.
So what does this do? So up here you can see what we've done. We've taken the original diffusion weighted images. We've done tensor fitting, and now we're at the ninth dimensional tensor file that's rotationally variant. We can then do uh, the matrix decomposition to make that rotationally invariant. And then really the last step is to how to make this uh, even uh, lower dimension so we can do some statistics on this. And what we can do is we can look at these shapes so you can see all these tensor shapes within the brain. And we can, from these tensor shapes, we can measure the amount of an isotropy. And um, white here, really bright colors, is high on isotropy. And dark, you can see here, is low on isotropy. So high on isotropy occurs where there's high myelination, high, a lot of axons, which is really in the white matter. And um, the color map here indicates the direction of the primary eigenvector direction, so the, where the uh, where the uh, uh, the football is pointing. But if you remove that and you only look at the intensity values, um, you really essentially decompose this nine dimensions to one dimension uh, of measuring how sharp this football shape is. And that's when we can really do some some work to to uh, to isolate uh, where damages in Alzheimer's disease. So as, as I said before, these are non-focal damages, so it's very difficult to see in one subject. So we're going to do in 59 subjects from ages 70 to 86. We have uh, a distribution of uh, subjects with the E4 genotype and those that are don't have the E4 gene as whatsoever. We have a distribution of subjects with uh, different clinical dementia ratings. So 0 is normal and 2 is very demented, but you can see we have a distribution of them. And for each of these subjects, we have the FA images I talked about before. And we have a set of N subjects here, 59 subjects. And in order to compare these FA images, um, they're all of different people's brains and they have different locations for different structures. So we perform nonlinear co-registration using uh, SBM, which is a, a, a co-registration and image analysis toolkit. And we use this Dartel um, algorithm to do this. And we then get a set of co-register images for each of these original FA images where there is spatial correspondence, meaning that uh, the spatial locations now match up. And this is really so that we can do voxel-wise comparisons between each of these imaging volumes of FA, uh, FA images. And uh, we do this um, voxel-wise uh, comparison whilst co correlating with uh, demographic or gen genetic information. Here, we decide to look at APOE, um, gender, and age. And when you do this correlation, you can look at how well um, the FA values correlate with these uh, different clinical measures. And um, you can generate these T-score maps. So for example, this is a T-score map uh, of APOE, I believe. Um, but we found that just correlating with APOE um, is, might not be an accurate representation of what's contributing to FA changes. And when that happens, basically you have FA maps that are, uh, T-score maps that are not significant. We found that, however, if you covary in our results here, if we covary for age and clinical dementia ratio, uh, rating, sorry, then we were able to get some significant maps that make sense. So here are the um, maps, the T-score maps for each of these different uh, variables that we have, and we covaried them together. And uh, these are of voxels that are uh, statistically significant, um, p less than 0 0.05, but they are not uh, FDR corrected. Um, and you can see that here, uh, an area that was thought to be damaged in Alzheimer's disease, uh, which is the posterior cingulum, can be shown here when we covary for age and CDR. And you can see these various other regions that are, that are um, correlated with the different factors, um, age, CDR, and age and uh, the genetic status. So we believe that these preliminary results really show how we can use voxel-wise statistics to isolate and map disease processes as Alzheimer's disease. 
and we believe that there are a number of ways to integrate these statistical maps into the imaging uh, informatic workflow, which we will not talk about in this talk, but hope that these preliminary results show the power of these matrices and how it is important to try to integrate these metrics into uh, everyday use in uh, the clinic. So in summary, we observe that the uh, current radiologic exams are largely limited to focal damage, such as in stroke or in uh, with tumors. In known focal diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease, there is a need to compute innovative dimension reducing metrics to measure damage. And we hope that these statistical parametric maps, such as these T-score maps, may be a, a, a helpful way to try to create these um, dimension reducing metrics. And we feel that this dimension reduction process and information aggregation and model formation occur quite naturally in the workflow in the PAC system. And with that, I'd like to thank the various PIs that have worked on this work with me, as well as our funding, um, which is through the National Institute of Aging um, program grant uh, held by uh, Dr. Helen Chu at USA. Thank you.